Hello, hello, everybody. I need you to get ready to vote. The, uh, the choices are one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And, and you will simply just type up your answer. Here is number one. By the way, you're so vain, you probably think this song is about you. Number one. Number two. Number three. What kind of a day does it feel like? Three, two, one. One are sort of the signature shades for me because I've had them for all eight years that I've been on CNN. I see a lot of ones and threes, very few twos, ones and threes, ones and threes. Okay, okay, okay. Two is out. Two is out. 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 Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to do it again. Who said that? Ann Sakura. Okay, hang on. Two is out. We're down to one and three. Here we go. One. Three. One. Three. I don't know. Jeez. Four. Who said four? Ralph. John wants 13, or maybe that's one and three. Three too big. Three too big. Hmm. Three too big. Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. They stopped, they stopped making the size. This this is a this is a 10-year-old frame. It's an Oliver Peoples 10-year-old frame. I have had the lenses replaced. And I, I gotta say, it's it's a freaking fortune every time I do it because I need progressive lenses and I need them to be anti-reflective, like these lights. Notice how they're not reflecting. It's a couple hundred dollar proposition just to get new lenses. So these are the size I like. But my favorite glasses, and I broke them, were like this, except in this size. But these are too big, aren't they? I mean, I could I could like wear these in Hollywood, but I don't think I could wear these. And then the ones that I, I like. It's kind of a sad story because a friend of our family passed away, um, a really wonderful guy named Bill Smart, and his wife wanted me to have his glasses, Stacy, so I put my prescription in his glasses. So when I wear these, it's a bit of an homage, you know? But for television, they're a little large, aren't they? Yeah. All right. Well, I don't mean to torture you like this, but tune in at 9 a.m. And I assure you it will either be one or it will be three. It will be one or it will be three, depending on how I feel. But at least you helped me elim eliminate two. And for that, I am grateful. So before I came on, um, I was just sort of interacting with some folks who were here. And by the way, thank you for being here. And I, I want to discuss something that doesn't relate to today's subject, which is servant of the people. And it's this. So, you know, start of a new year, I always like to shake things up, as, as my father would have said, to shake the bottle, do things a little bit differently. So in the studio, uh, we got television monitors that are really cool so that I can keep an eye on MSNBC, CNN, and Fox at the same time. And I, I finally invested, and there's this, this really great group of of young guys with a video company outside of Philadelphia called Creative Outfit. And I met them through happenstance. I was giving a speech and they were recording it for a, a private client. I was giving a, a speech for hire to a private business group and they were recording it. I'd never met them before. 
And the speech was very unique. I won't go into those details, but the best thing to come out of it is that I met I met these individuals with a production company, um, you know, getting started with their business and eager, which is great. So one thing led to another. They installed great high def cameras in the radio studio. And that is what has caused me to say, let's really try and put good content on the YouTube channel. We used to do things on Facebook. Now I've shifted to YouTube. Part of the rationale, total candor, is monetization. Um, But also because of the versatility that YouTube allows me that Facebook did not. Anyway, bottom line is we've been putting great stuff up and experimenting, doing some things live, doing some things taped. Um, It's also fun to be able to needle TC because she really did used to show up in the studio each and every day, like in a sweatsuit that she calls athleisure wear or some such thing. I don't know. Um, But ever since the cameras came, like the lipstick has come out, the blouses have materialized. It's hysterical just to watch the impact. The cameras have been worth it. Like the camera investment has been worth it just for, for the upgrade in TC's look and appearance. I'm so I'm sure somewhere in these comments she's dying right now hearing me say this. Okay, but in all seriousness, um, so now we think we've got it down, and and what I'm doing in a more formal sense is something that I had been doing already informally on radio, which is I, I determine what are the issues that might come up on that day's radio program. They get posted on the website. They then go out in the newsletter, and I draw on them during the course of the radio program. So we've turned it into an informal newscast, usually in the back end, final half hour of the program, but not always. And we get to have some interplay and talk about what's in the news that maybe wasn't on the front page, but is at smirconish.com. So for example, you know, the Will Smith story has been big this week. That's actually been a front page-ish story. But as the days have progressed, it moves, you know, further down the mix. But I want to talk about it at some point. So it it becomes one of the headlines or, you know, a lot of pop culture. Um, Bruce Willis and and his his medical ailment, another great example of that sort of thing. So um, I'm just trying to figure out how to notify those of you who are the most regular viewers when we're doing it. And Facebook used to have an automatic notification process that YouTube apparently does not. Now, my old friend from Doylestown, Bob Starner, somewhere in here said they notified. But Bob, I'm registered as a subscriber for my own YouTube channel, and I don't get notifications. So I have to figure it out, and the guys from Creative Outfit have to figure it out. But the point I wanted to make to all of you is keep an eye on this channel because good things are happening. And I I feel like these various platforms on which I need to be involved doing what I do for a living, we finally have them working in concert with one another and hopefully not in a way that's over the top that I'm always pushing stuff on you. Cause I don't, I don't like to do that. You know, we sold some t-shirts because they were cool and they were worthy, but I said I would end them at the end of the year. And we did. I mean, I don't want to always be hawking things, but what I really am offering is content on each of these platforms and you don't have to pay for it, which is, which is great. Um, Yeah. So if you have suggestions, you know, put them here now because you are the people I'm most concerned about. You who are with me on a Saturday morning. I think one last thing I'll say, and then I'll get off this is that I, I think that Saturday is a benchmark. Like, you know, unless something unforeseen has occurred that it's 7:30 on Saturday morning, this is where you'll find me. I will be live. And I will be keeping track of your comments. You have to have notifications turned on. Bob, I do. Yeah, Brenda. Brenda says, I don't get notified and I wish that I did. E. Kelly Harrison. There is a notification button when you first go on your channel. I, But I've, okay, then Mary White says, YouTube doesn't notify. Set up an email blast and that's the way to do it. Yeah, David. David says that he signed up for notifications and he doesn't and he doesn't get them. Hey, um, 
Randy or PJ from Creative Outfit, I assume you're looking at all these comments because this is a lab experiment. These are the people we are most concerned about. And you can tell, like, okay, Pete Froelich says he gets notifications. And others say they don't get notifications. Ryan, you say you get them every week, but I think that's for the 730. But Ryan, did you get them during the course of the week when we were live? I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. And, and one other thing I'll, I'll, I'll tell you is that the newsletter, um, which I've invested in, you know, all that branding and imaging and getting it just right doesn't doesn't come inexpensively. But the newsletter is exactly what I want it to be. And we are now about to undertake a redesign of the, the website because I'm not satisfied with the, uh, the website. So something's always in the mix. It's just my nature. I, I'm never satisfied. Yeah, so David says he gets notifications on Saturdays only. Right. Okay, well, the, 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 the boys from Creative Outfit are, are going to take a look at all of your comments. Thank you. If you have anything to say on this subject, post it here. Because we sit around talking about like, hey, did people get notified? I didn't get notified. Did you get notified? You're the ones who know. So you're helping me right now by giving me feedback. Um, the television show today, the television show, let, let me work backwards. Tonight is March Madness. How funny was it that uh, I went to the Arkansas Duke game in San Francisco a week ago tonight and the basketball got trapped above the glass. And this has happened a couple of times uh, during March Madness, but it, it was so great, and I knew it was coming when I saw the ball get get uh, stuck. An Arkansas cheerleading duo, like a guy lifting a woman, immediately come over, and they dislodged the basketball. Well, it happened right in front of me. So I, without thinking, you know, this is what three beers at a basketball will do to you. I jump out of my feet, and I cheer them on. And somebody watching recorded this on television and put it into my social media. If you look at Instagram, uh, you will see a picture of me, a still image. We, we, we're not allowed to show it on CNN today. I wanted to work it into my CNN program today because we're going to talk March Madness with Sir Charles Barkley. But Catherine, my producer, said that it would have cost like thousands of dollars for licensing <laughs> just to show the video of me cheering for the Arkansas cheerleaders. Anyway, I love Barkley. We will talk about uh, March Madness. When Auburn, his alma mater, was playing Miami, uh, Sir Charles said that he would take his shirt off if Auburn won the game. And, of course, the Hurricanes stomped them. So I'll have some fun with him talking about his brackets and whether he doomed Auburn by threatening to take off his shirt. The Oscars. The Oscars. Scott Johnson was a... Um, a guest on the radio show this week, he wrote a cover story for LA Magazine about the future of the Oscars having nothing to do with Will Smith. And I I love this issue. And I think that it's it's been underreported. There's something called Aperture 2025. And if a motion picture wants to be nominated for best picture come 2025, there's a slew of diversity requirements that have to be met. And if you don't check every one of the boxes, then your movie cannot win the Academy Award for Best Picture. Can't be submitted, can't be considered. So I'll talk to Scott Johnson about that. Chris Cabrera is a spokesman for the, uh, the is it a trade organization or a union? The, the border agents. It's the professional organization of the more than 10,000 border agents in the United States because there is a mass migration event about to take place. The Biden administration yesterday said, as it expected, that they were going to get rid of Title 42, which has been used to thwart asylum seekers coming to the United States on the grounds that they may have COVID. Well, as the pandemic has waned, that argument has gone away. So look out, because a combination of seasonal factors and pent-up demand they say there are 170,000 migrants poised to cross the border. Like the last thing this administration needs 
on top of managing Ukraine and inflation, gas prices, et cetera, is a mass migratory event on the border. And you can imagine how Republicans will use that and the film footage from it if it turns out. And then finally, um, this is kind of interesting because for the last couple of weeks on CNN, I have been 100% talking about Ukraine. I get four blocks on a typical Saturday show, and all four have been about Ukraine for the last few weeks. Today, three of the four are not on Ukraine. Uh, March Madness, the border, the Oscars, not Ukraine. I am going to lead the program, however, talking about Ukraine. It's been a relatively quiet week, meaning not a major uh, event kind of week in Ukraine. Um, of course, I still want to discuss it, and I have a great guest to discuss it. It, it turns out that my guest, uh, whose name, by the way, is Ivan Nechapurenko, he is in Moscow, actually now in Istanbul, because they had to leave for the New York Times and shares the byline on the page one above the fold story, which talks about how Russians are rallying around Putin. Hey, I can't help but think that part of the reason they're rallying around Putin is because in part of what Biden said when he was in Poland about regime change, it seems to have played right into Putin's hand in terms of uh, Putin now being able to say, see this, the, the West, they want to depose me. But the subject most on my mind about Ukraine is President Zelensky. And what I've been saying on radio during the course of the week is that my favorite show on television is Servant of the People. And I feel like I have gained so much insight into Zelensky by watching a sitcom. You know, a sitcom starring Zelensky that aired for three seasons culminating in 2019, the year that he was elected president of Ukraine. It's, it's really tremendous. And it's about a high school teacher, a history teacher, you know, plucked from obscurity and elected Ukrainian president. Of course, it's a bit fantastical, but uh, how does it happen? It happens because he has a rant against government corruption. It gets recorded by one of his students. It becomes a viral moment. Then they turn to crowd uh, funding and they raise money to whatever, whatever, two million, whatever the currency is in Ukraine to get him on the ballot. And he wins. And he is immediately besieged by everyone around him, just sort of endemic of their culture of corruption. Everybody wants something, even his family members. Everybody asks for a favor. Everybody wants to have, you know, a piece of the action. And so he's an honest broker trying to be the Ukrainian president. And it's because of the endearing way in which he plays this character that he gets elected. It's crazy and it's funny. It's subtitled. I wish the subtitles were a little bit larger. Um, but I'm going to talk about things I think I've learned from the television program about President Zelensky and about Ukraine and Kyiv. Because what I'm going to say on television is that we're all now so accustomed to seeing Kyiv and Ukraine as war-torn, drab and dreary. But look at the trailer, look at the opening for Servant of the People, and you will see a vibrant cosmopolitan people, you know, yearning for democracy free of corruption. I, I had these thoughts. I'll give you just one last, one last insight, and then I, I better go get to work. I had all these thoughts about um, Zelensky and what I was learning from the uh, television program. And after I wrote up what I thought, I shared it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you on television today. Suffice it to say, I, I shared my thinking with a Hollywood A-lister as a um, sanity check. And he or she had an interesting reaction, which is a part of today's program. All right. Well, thank you all for the feedback. Thank you all for, for being here on YouTube. Thank you for your voting, number one or number three. One, it's funny, it's funny when I get an eye exam, you know, it's always like they're covering your eye and they say, uh, which of these is better? One, three, one, three. No, this is pure vanity that we are involved in here. One, three. 
I don't know. I'm torn. It'll be a game time decision. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for the feedback. You're still voting. And look at the voting. It's divided. It's evenly divided between one and three. It's hysterical. Total even divide. Would have made a good survey question. Thanks, everybody. Hey, by the way, by the way, huh? I'm I'm all out of Ukrainian ties now. I've worn every Ukrainian tie I have, but that's the winner. Isn't that the isn't that the one? Purely coincidental that when I reached in my closet, that's what I came out with. See ya.